I'm very much interested in this subject. It is very close to my heart, and David is, uh, has a lot to teach on the subject. Of course, we have a, a short time today, but I'm looking forward to it. A Feldenkrais lesson for easing anxiety. So I will pass it along to you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. And thank you for all that you do to help disseminate Dr. Feldenkrais's work. Um, I'm uh, happy to be with you today for this short time. And um, of course, this is just um, whatever we're gonna have, half an hour, 45 minutes. It's not uh, an in-depth treatment of our subject, but certainly there is a, a, a larger um, treatment of it in the um, neurological balance recordings, which um, you might be interested in. Um, so in the most general sense, and I think I say in the most general sense because I can make this kind of large grand statement safely, um, in the ge most general sense, we have two pools on our nervous system. One is restorative. We must restore our, um, our cells, our systems, um, and, that, and that necessitates a certain level of comfort and ease. The other pull on our nervous system is self-preservation. And you can say, oh, well, self-preservation means restoring ourselves, etc. But I mean self-preservation in the sense of being prepared for the dangers that may lurk in the environment. And often what happens, and this is not, not just human beings, but um, even very what you might call, um, I wouldn't, but what you might call primitive organisms, um, this, this pull towards self-preservation can become a habit. And that's the important thing to understand. This can be for, for all of us. Um, it can become a habit. And that means that the ways in which I prepare myself or anticipate danger or difficulty, I'm in a constant state of readiness. So that's where I believe the, the work of Dr. Feldenkrais, who wrote oodles and oodles of um, text on exactly this problem that we're speaking of. Um, I believe that his work is uniquely positioned to make a profound change for those of us who have developed habits that are linked to this um, uh, drive for self-preservation. And by that, I mean that, um, that for, for, so for, for, for many of us, we have habituated to what is colloquially called anxiety, meaning my blood pressure may be raised, my muscular tension level may be raised, I breathe in a particular way as if I'm anticipating a problem, a difficulty, an attack to be, um, you know, that's the, what should we call it, say the, the, the etiology or the, the history, the natural history of anxiety is in simply that, to, to be, that the organism needs to be prepared for how to react when there's an attack. And we have carried that, we have preserved that, um, that ability 
from the earliest days of, of life to, to now in us as human beings. And because it has such a, a cogent um, immediacy to it, in other words, it makes a lot of noise in our, ner in our nervous system, we find it very easy to habituate to it. Not that we find it easy because we want to habituate to the anxiety, but because the, our nervous system is protecting us and thinks that that danger is here, present all the time. All right? So that there's a certain constellation of things that we do in order to be in a state of readiness for that challenge. And so we're going to um, do a, a short um, Feldenkrais-based, Feldenkrais-inspired lesson. It's my, you could say, my, my twist on it, but um, it's certainly, I, I owe my thinking and my insights on the way that Dr. Feldenkrais um, taught me to think. And he said that explicitly. He would say, I'm teaching you not a way of working, but a way of thinking. So, um, so let's lie on the floor and lie on your back. And take off your shoes, take off your belt. And we will see if we can intersect with the ways that most of us, I would say all of us, um, tend to be inclined towards um, anxiety to one extent or another. And we'll see how we can intersect with that to, to change it and to free you from it. So just put your hands on your lower abdomen. Bend your knees and stand your feet. If you need to put something behind your head in order to be comfortable, if that's the only way you can be comfortable, then go ahead and put a little something behind your head. You can lie on your bed if you want. But of course, the... The most important thing is that you be comfortable. Otherwise, your nervous system is not free to listen to your sensations and to changes in those sensations. Now, as you lie there, you can observe that you are inhaling through your nose and exhaling and see if you can exhale through your nose as well and just observe as you inhale what changes in the shape of your lower abdomen In other words, does your lower abdomen become larger or smaller? Does it expand or does it recede? And when you exhale, also, what changes in the shape of your lower abdomen? Now, 
there are different ways of breathing. And there are ways of breathing that oftentimes people with chronic anxiety habituate to. And there's ways of breathing that are that are linked to that state of comfort and ease, the absence of anxiety. And so if you would, see if you can, as you inhale, allow your lower abdomen to expand. And by your lower abdomen, I mean the area between your, your belly button and your pubis, your pubic bone. So pretty far down there, the lower part of your door, of your pelvic floor area. And when you inhale, you see if that area can expand a little bit. And then you just exhale without trying to do anything deliberately. And you don't have to do this in some exaggerated sort of way. Just simply, simply inhale into your lower abdomen. Feeling that your lower abdomen expands, of course, forward. And of course, a little bit backwards. And likewise, your lower abdomen expands out to the sides a little. If you move your hands a little to the side of yourself, below your ribs, you'll feel that there's an expansion there. Maybe one side expands more than the other or less than the other. But still, your lower abdomen is expanding. And just try to reduce your, what we could say, your, your, your resting activity. I, that's a paradoxical phrase, but meaning the muscular effort that you're maintaining, even though we are resting on our back. If you feel the urge to, I don't know, to lengthen your legs or to um, not attend to yourself in this way for a moment, feel free to. In other words, feel free to to pause or to rest for a moment. And now, as you kind of generalize your attention, what does that mean? It means that you allow your attention to move or you direct your attention to move about yourself. In other words, your chest, your arms, your legs, for most of us, our attention is, is distributed in a very limited ways. And that becomes a habit. And the history of this for each person is of course unique and different. But you'll find that the more that we can generalize our attention, the more we're able to enlarge or expand our body self-image and to become kind of a more accurate observers of ourself. Now, I'd like to describe that movement of inhaling in a slightly different way, but you continue thinking of inhaling down towards your pubic bone and that area expanding. But see if you can feel that not only does 
that expansion happen in a, we could call it a, a downward way, but it also moves upwards. Upwards meaning towards your chest and your neck. Because of course, when you inhale, you're not really breathing into your lower abdomen. I know that it's called belly breathing or tummy breathing or abdominal breathing, but we don't really breathe down there. What happens is, is that our, in healthy breathing, our diaphragm descends and our diaphragm expanding and descending pushes our, our viscera downward and there's a general expansion. So all I'm asking you now is to, to see if you can feel that as you inhale, you can feel that downward pressure that we are have been sensing and feeling the last few minutes, but there's also a movement upwards. And that movement upwards has to do with our lungs expanding, taking in oxygen. That's good. Now, maybe just pause and, and rest for a moment. You can stretch out your legs if you like. And please bend your knees again and separate your feet about shoulder width apart. That's right. And bring your attention again to your lower abdomen and expanding how your lower abdomen expands, how the whole lower abdominal area expands as you inhale. Again, without overdoing it. And now, and now, open your mouth and very slightly move your lower jaw, just a small amount to the left. You could put your, the fingers of your left hand on your chin and just observe. As you exhale, you move your lower jaw to the left just a small amount. Most people don't realize how, how intrinsically involved our jaw is in that habit of anxiety. Of course, people who are tooth grinders or people who have TMJ problems understand it. But it's true for all of us. And just slowly, slowly move your lower jaw to the left as you exhale. And then you allow your jaw to come back to the middle. And you, you inhale. Just simply. And just feel where you can reduce the effort in that small movement of your jaw to the left. That's right. Now, bring your jaw back to the middle. And if you were holding your chin, put your left hand on your lower abdomen again. And now just make a, again, a small movement, just a few inches of tilting your pelvis to the left. Just a very small movement, tilting your pelvis a little to the left. If your knees tilt a little, that's fine. No, it's not necessary for your knees to make a big movement, but you just, your pelvis is lying on the floor and you tilt your pelvis in such a way that you feel that the left side of your pelvis is pressing more to the floor. In other words, as if you were to roll to your left, of course you would, the right side of your pelvis would come entirely off the floor. So we're not making such a big movement. 
but you just do what's easy, tilting your pelvis to the left, that small amount as you exhale. For this lesson, we'll do most of the movements as we exhale. I'm happy to explain why. And now bring your pelvis back to the middle, your knees, and again, move your lower jaw to the left and just observe if something feels a little easier about that, a little smoother. That's good. Now, stop again. And this time, please, again, just in an unhurried, very simple way, lift your right shoulder, your right shoulder blade, the tiniest bit away from the floor. Tiny meaning if someone were standing, I don't know, 10, 15 feet away from you, they might not notice. They might not notice that you are lifting your right shoulder. So it's not a big movement. Your arm doesn't lift. Your elbow doesn't lift. It's just a very small movement of your right shoulder blade. That's right. That's excellent. As you exhale, feel where you can make it easier, less effort. And again, again, your attention kind of fluctuates between the local and the general, meaning you bring your attention to your shoulder and you feel what you're doing, but as you're lifting the right shoulder blade away from the floor, you allow your attention to become wider and more general. Feel where you can do less. And now open your mouth a little bit. That's right. And, and, as you lift your right shoulder blade a few times, move your lower jaw to the left, just slowly. That's good. And you can feel there's something about lifting your right shoulder blade away from the floor that maybe makes the movement of the jaw feel a little lighter or a little easier. Good. And rest for a moment. Stretch out your legs. Of course, if you do this lesson on your own at, at home, you can do the lesson, the, sorry, the, each individual movement. You can do many more times than, than time is allowing us today. I used to do workshops with a, um, a very, very smart gentleman named Jeff, Jeffrey Cram, Dr. Cram. And Dr. Cram was a, a very well-known uh, biofeedback um, physiologist and clinician and wrote a number of textbooks on biofeedback. And we would do these workshops where I would lead people, the group, in, in a lesson, and there would be one person hooked up to um, EMG, maybe like, I don't know, 20, 30 electrodes all over their body. And we could see how at the beginning of the lesson, as for example, as a person moved their lower jaw to the left, there was all sorts of unnecessary effort going on all over themselves, the abdominal muscles, the shoulders, and by slowly, slowly identifying those movements and reducing the effort, the readings we were seeing, the output on, the, on his machines and his, um, his monitors was just so different. It was, it was beautiful to see. So now slowly, Bend your knees again, separate your feet, shoulder width or a little more, and now slowly 
as you move your lower jaw to the left, just simply tilt your pelvis again to the left. So you join these two movements, but just slow, just small. You join these two movements the way we did with the shoulder. And maybe you can feel that when you tilt your pelvis like that and move your lower jaw to the left, something is happening in your right shoulder. Can you feel that? That, that without you intending anything, without you adding something or making an effort, your right shoulder is actually moving a little bit away from the floor as you tilt your pelvis to the left and move your lower jaw to the left. That's right. In other words, the muscles that move the jaw are very connected to the muscles of the back of our neck. And those muscles are also connected and the vertebra of the back of the neck are connected to the, to the musculature of the right shoulder. All right, rest again, and please stretch out your legs. And now close your eyes, if they weren't closed, and observe the feeling of the left side of your face compared to the right. That's right. The left side of your lower abdomen compared to the right. But primarily the left side of your face, the left side of your neck. And notice that maybe the left side of your face feels larger, warmer, more spacious than the right side. All right, please bend your knees, separate your feet, and now slowly, slowly move your lower jaw to the right as you exhale. Only what is easy, and again, you can put the fingers of your right hand on your chin just to feel, just to get that feedback, you could say. You're not in a rush, you're not in a hurry. It's not a matter of making the movement repetitive. You have a, a real pause, a, a, a four count pause between each movement. Feeling where you can reduce the effort in your face, in your neck, in your left shoulder. That's right. Good. And now, as you move your lower jaw to the right, move your eyes to the right with the movement of the jaw. That's right. You see, your eyes and your jaw are very closely wired together. And so if we just spend a moment re-syncing, re that movement of your jaw to the right with the movement of your eyes to the right, you'll see something deep inside of your nervous system will begin to relax. And we can talk about that later, maybe. And now, see, feel what happens if you move your eyes slowly, just a small amount, to the left. You see, as you move your lower jaw to the right. And then you see that, you feel that the movement of the jaw is not the same if you move your eyes to the left. You feel it becomes you could say, 
constrained or restricted or smaller. That's good. You only need to do it a few times and then you'll find now you move your jaw to the right and that impediment from the moving the eyes to the left is not there. That's it. Good. And just again, rest for a moment. You can stretch out your legs and observe if that, if you felt a disparity in your sensation of the left side of your face and the right before, is it a little less now? In other words, that difference was was due to what we had been doing, what you had been doing, that in a matter of minutes, you produced a, a beautiful cessation of unnecessary effort in your face and your neck, and please bend your knees. And now slowly, still breathing into your lower abdomen when you inhale, and as you exhale, lifting now your left shoulder a little bit, but just a, a very small amount. That's right, you, you lift your left shoulder blade a little bit away from the floor, and then you just let it go back, and you rest. And then you do it again, but slowly, slowly, so that there's the time as you lift the shoulder, there's the time for you to, to feel yourself and to feel where you can reduce the effort. And now go ahead and slowly, slowly, move your lower jaw to the right as you lift your left shoulder. Just small, simple. You're not striving. You're not trying to achieve anything. You're not trying to get anywhere. But to have your attention be internally directed. We're not measuring or evaluating what we're doing. Just feeling where we can do less. That's good. Now rest a moment. Just observe yourself. Your feeling of yourself. That movement of your lower abdomen as you inhale. And now slowly tilt your pelvis to the right and back to the middle. It's your pelvis. As we said before, if your knees tilt a little, that's okay. But you just tilt your pelvis to the right so you feel that your the right side of your pelvis becomes flush with the floor and the left side of your pelvis lifts a little. But it's small, discreet, simple. As you exhale, And now as you, as you move your, tilt your pelvis that little bit to the right, go ahead and move your lower jaw. You'll open your mouth first and then move your lower jaw to the right. And you feel. Do you think it's far-fetched that there's a connection between that your pelvis tilting to the right and the movement of your jaw? You might, but if you now inhibit your pelvis from moving at all and move your lower jaw, you'll feel, oh, there is a connection. Or if you would move Tilt your pelvis to the left when you move your lower jaw to the right. 
then then it's obvious, isn't it? Then it's obvious. And now go back to letting your pelvis tilt a little to the right as you move your lower jaw to the right. You, of course, you can feel that the back of your head is turning on the floor. Good. All right. Let's rest again. The resting is good. The resting is when our nervous system can integrate and absorb what we've been doing. There's, of course, thousands of studies showing the necessity of resting or sleep for integrating learning. Just notice the movement of your lower abdomen. And notice, notice if something feels easier or, or clearer to you about that en enlarging of your lower abdomen as you inhale. Not that you try to make it larger, See if you can notice that something has relaxed in your back, in your abdomen, that's allowing your diaphragm to descend more easily. Or it's hard to feel our diaphragm. You can feel that your lower abdomen is expanding more easily. Okay, please bend your knees again. That's right, and put your hands on your lower abdomen. And now let's put these movements we've been doing together, but just in a simple, simple way. As you move your lower jaw, alternate, moving it to the right. You open your mouth first, moving your lower jaw to the right, and then to the left. And notice, are your eyes spontaneously moving with your jaw? Or are they staying in the middle? Or moving in the opposite direction? See if it's easier to move your lower jaw just in a simple way to the left and to the right as you allow your eyes to move in the same direction as the movement of your jaw. That's right. Now go ahead and move your eyes in the opposite direction. You still move your jaw slowly to the left and to the right, but you move your eyes to the right and to the left in the opposite direction of your jaw. And then you can easily feel that the eyes do have the ability to influence the jaw, or it's, it's, it's unidirectional, of course. The unnecessary effort in your jaw can affect your vision profoundly. And now take your eyes with the movement of your jaw. That's right. You can feel again your head is turning a little to the right and a little to the left. All right, rest for a moment and just feel the contact of your spine with the floor. In other words, the change in the tonus in your musculature is becoming general. It's not just your face, not just your neck. Okay, please bend your knees if you lengthened your legs and your hands on your lower abdomen. And now open your mouth and slowly begin to move your lower jaw to the right and to the left. 
That's right. And now go ahead and begin to make a very small movement of lifting the opposite shoulder away from the floor. Meaning when you move your jaw to the left, you lift your right shoulder. And when you move your jaw to the right, you lift your left shoulder. And of course you can feel right away that that makes something a little lighter, a little easier. Maybe your head turns a little more easily or maybe your eyes are moving a little more softly and easily. But now feel what happens if you lift the same side shoulder. So when your jaw goes to the right, you lift your right shoulder. And when your jaw goes to the left, you lift the left shoulder. Just, you feel, it's a, of course it's a smaller movement of the, your jaw, and it's a smaller movement of your shoulder blades lifting from the floor, isn't it? And yet, for many people in my practice of having seen many thousands of people, for many people, this is their habitual way of, of relating the movement of their jaw and their upper back and shoulder. And now go ahead and go back to moving the opposite shoulder and see if you feel that, oh, it's a little, it's a little freer. It's a little easier, lighter, more comfortable. Good. And please rest again. Just observing your contact with the floor and the contact of your shoulder blades with the floor. Please bend your knees. And now, now, of course, you can probably guess what we're going to do. And, and you're right. <laughs> So now go ahead, open your mouth, move your lower jaw to the left and to the right, just slowly as you tilt your pelvis a little to the right and to the left. So you tilt your pelvis and you feel it's, your pelvis is tilting in, in exactly the same direction as your chin is going. That's right. That's good. And now go ahead and move your jaw in distinction to your pelvis. So when your pelvis tilts to the left, you move your jaw to the right. And when your pelvis tilts to the right, you move your jaw to the left. That's right. Very good. You, it's still, still, even with this, that little, the challenge of, of doing this, you feel where you can do less, where you can relax yourself. And now let's put everything together in the same direction, meaning, meaning that you move your lower jaw to the right and you lift your, your left shoulder blade and you tilt your pelvis a little to the right, and then you move your lower jaw to the left, and your eyes go to the left, and you lift your right shoulder blade, and you tilt your pelvis to the left. So everything is going together, and you find now that, of course, that your, your head is turning in a much freer way. That's right. And the movement of your jaw is easy. You relax your tongue. You're breathing. Okay. Please stop and stretch out your legs and just you feel yourself.
Just observe if you just took a, a large breath. Move your hands away from your lower abdomen, but feel you can put your hands on the floor. But maybe, maybe that movement of your abdomen is still there. That's right. And how your shoulder blades are resting, your spine. You'll find that your face is more relaxed. I know everybody wants to lose their, their frown and to lose the creases in their face. But the muscles of the jaw are by far the strongest muscles of our face. And so when those jaw muscles are relaxed, it has an effect on all the muscles of our face. And so you'll see that your forehead is much smoother. All right, please bend your knees. Please roll to your side and slowly come up to sitting and then to standing. That's good. Now, stand, just stand there where you are for a moment and observe if you can relax your lower abdomen and relax your throat and your lower jaw. That's right. You feel a little taller, a little shorter. Something different about your breathing. And please walk around for a moment and just observe if you can, as you walk, use your awareness to feel where you can reduce the effort, how you can keep your jaw soft as you walk around and your tongue relaxed and your lower abdomen. Very good. So, nice to be with you. And um, I hope you feel a little, a little more at ease than when we began. And um, I think you'll find even though what we just did today is, is not in the Neurological Balance series, you can consider it a bonus track. Um, many lessons are there, which will have a profound effect on your well-being and your nervous system. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, if you have a moment, David, in case anyone has any questions about the series, do you have another couple minutes or? Sure. How are you? Okay. Sure. sure. Okay. So while while you are here, also if you have any questions about the series or if you want to share your experience of what you're noticing too. We, um, somebody said fantastic bonus track. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I definitely needed that. Um, so I will just give a little overview too of this series. Uh, there are, it's a six week series, but there were two uh, intro lessons that are included. And one is on the, the jaw and tongue and different than this one. And then the other one is working with the spine, neurological balance and creativity through your spine, something like that. And then there's also five 
bonus mini lessons called what would that what were those called again? Calm and soothe. Soothe and calm, yes. Soothe. And also, David and I met each week of this series to answer questions that people had. And so there are six um, six bonus Q and A sessions that are recorded and are just a super rich resource. And there is a live Q and A that comes with the recorded series that's in August. And you can either come live or you can submit your questions ahead of time. Okay, so questions here. Is it normal while I release my jaw, I started to hear more of your voice and started to feel I needed to release through a nap? I needed to release? Through a nap. Oh, that's great. That's great. That, uh, yeah, that's your nervous system being um, more comfortable, more at ease. Um, and hearing more of my voice is, of course, our, our, our jaw is, um, you know, right next to the meatus of the ear. And, and often um, people who have chronic TMJ difficulties will believe, and I think rightly so, that their hearing is impacted. So, and no pun intended. And, um, Yes, yeah, so so it's very easy to imagine, and I I feel that my somehow my ears open when I work with my jaw. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's very common. There was a a question about the making movements while exhaling, and a request for you to speak more about that. Yeah, I think because of time, we'll make this um, uh, uh, the the short version. But the short version is, is that we, when we inhale, uh, there's much less available movement, especially of the, the chest and the ribs. So also when we, when we inhale in general, in general, as the diaphragm descends, the movement of the between the, the chest and the pelvis also becomes limited. I mean, we're not talking about huge amounts, but it's enough that, um, that you could make the statement that, um, that inhaling will have a restrictive effect on the movement, uh, movement of the back, movement of the, um, of the of the rib cage and 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 consequently then of the neck and the pelvis so um that's why we exhale and another question you mentioned that's difficult to feel the dra the diaphragm could you elaborate on this well they're just there there it's um it is um um It doesn't. It doesn't have a lot of sensory uh, fibers that that innervate it, and it's working. Um, the breathing is theoretically um, and hopefully a a lower brain automatic function, and um, in other words, breathing in general is something that we are. Um, it's not useful to be distracted by our breathing. Okay? It's only if my breathing is impaired that my attention is, or stressed in some way, challenged, that um, my attention is drawn there. So, um, yeah, I think so, so that, the, that, and the changes that are happening in terms of my, my abdomen from that pressure is, is happening to my viscera. And again, I don't have sensory fibers in, in, in my viscera there and, and, and the musculature, or, or I should say, and it's smooth. They're made of smooth muscle. So um, again, um, that is how the creator uh, made it with, with in good logic, I think. 
Well, thanks, David. I don't want to keep you any longer. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And um, for if those of you that are watching this later and you have comments or questions, feel free to put them in and we'll answer them. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Everybody have a good day. Great. And if you want to find, learn more about David, you can also check out feldenkraisaccess.com. Great. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, okay. David. Cheers. Bye-bye.